I'm here with the legendary DJ Greg Wilson. So you've had a massive contribution to the music industry. How do you think it's changed over the years? Because you've been for DJing for quite a while. Yeah, I started uh, originally way back, 1975. Yeah. And I stopped for 20 years, so there was like a gap in between. Then I started again in, in 2003. So the two periods, uh, I mean, the music industry's massively changed, especially in the past 10 years, you know, with the advent of downloads. Yeah. It's absolutely changed the whole thing around. And I think it's only just kind of finding its feet again now. It's, it's just kind of realizing how to, you know, adapt within this, this new climate. Um, you know, obviously people just download stuff for themselves and so they've got to find a way around that, you know, around how do we sell our music, you know, to, to a, a generation that's used to basically picking it up for free, you know, in many respects. But, you know, I mean, it's like anything. I mean, that's happened before in the past with things like sheet music, moving into, you know, like records and, you know, so, so it'll always adapt and find a different way of doing things. So you're the pioneer behind electro funk. What was the response like in New York? Well, I mean, basically it was a music that came out of New York in the early 80s. It was really, you know, like dance music back then was, was pretty much black music. It was, um, it, it, you know, largely it was uh, mainly soul and funk. When we talk about disco in its original term, yeah. that's what it was. It was music played in clubs and discotheques. It wasn't a, a specific genre as such. And, and the majority of the music played was, as I say, black music, um, soul and funk generally, you know, was, um, was was where it was like back in the 70s. And as it moved into the early 80s, a lot of the black musicians, especially in New York and the Latino musicians, started to gain access to the technology, the drum machines, mm -hmm. sequences, samplers, you know, uh, synths, all these things. And, and that, that's really the start, you know, of the, of the electronic music era as, as, as we know it. Um, and, you know, fortunately at the time I was in Manchester, I was working at a club called Legend, which I think is 42nd Street these days. It's, it's very different. It look, I went in there once, it looks completely different. I mean, it was an amazing place back then. Um, you know, we had one of the best sound systems I'd ever heard in this country and, uh, you know, incredible light show and everything. Uh, and I worked every Wednesday. It was a predominantly black crowd who came in from obviously Manchester areas like Moss Side and Hume, but also like Birmingham, Sheffield, Leeds, Huddersfield, Bradford, you know, all these different places, different crews came in. And every Wednesday it was just like rammed with queues outside. It was quite phenomenal really when you, when you think back to it. And so basically what happened was that um, during this period, th this new music started to, to come through. And I was like the first to kind of react to that, to, um, you know, like within a club sense, and also at the same time as that, from a UK perspective, mixing was starting to, you know, really make sense it, because of the equipment, really. I mean, Legend was the first club I worked in that had SL 1200s yeah. in this country, and they had three. And so with this new kind of drum machine based music and also having the equipment to, to play it on, you know, I, I became known for mixing at, at that point in time as well. And you're a keen blogger as well. I'd say black music is a lot of your inspiration behind yeah. your blog. What other inspirations do you have in your blog? And do you think there's ever a book in the pipeline? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, I think that, uh, you know, at some point in time, I will get a book done. I mean, I've, I've already written the first draft on it. I did, I did it 10 years ago, but I just haven't had the time, you know, like to, to basically uh, to get back into it. And uh, I mean, I've never written a book before. It's, it's a whole different uh, arena. And so you've got to kind of comb through, you've got to amend, you've got to add new bits. And so I, since, since I, I mean, I, I did, you know, the, the, the bulk of it uh, before I'd started DJing again. So basically, you know, um, I haven't really found the time since then, you know, to be able to like put it all together and, and, and get it finished off and everything. So, so um, whenever I can't, I can't say when it'll actually happen and when, you know, I'll actually get the time to do that, but it's certainly something I have in mind. The blog in the meantime, you know, allows me to explore different areas of, of, of the cultural thing. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not just music. I also write about, um, you know, films and books. I mean, it's more so music, of course. And, and I think over the last year, things have got so busy that I haven't had much time to write a, a, apart from, you know, like blogs about like um, the scene and what's going on or, or kind of history of things. Because really, you know, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I'm about is reconnecting. It's, it's about the history and connecting it back so people have an understanding, especially younger people, uh, of where we're coming from with it. Because I, I think it's, it's really important to, to, to um, you know, 
the old maxim, you know, to, to, to know the future first, you must know the past. And, you know, especially in the UK, a lot of people get confused over the acid house era, like, like and, and Ibiza, as though that was a starting point, that was a year zero. Whereas really, you know, I mean, there was so much that happened before. For example, in Manchester, if you go back, back into the early 60s, you had like a club called the Twisted Wheel. I think it opened in 63 and, and closed in 71. I mean, such um, an influential venue and it was playing the cutting edge music of the time, which was like the soul and rhythm and blues. And, and out of that came the Northern Soul scene. It was people digging for rarer records. And so, you know, Manchester has a lot, lot to answer for in, in these respects. So you can imagine, you know, like for, for somebody to, to, to think that it all started in 88 with Acid House, yeah. you're cutting out, you know, like what was that 25 years previous? That's a whole history. And, and, and it's also to do with the, the, there's a particular British fascination with black music um, that dates back probably to, I'd say it goes back into the Second World War when, when the GIs came over in America, especially the, the black GIs, and brought their music with them and brought jukeboxes over and, and played these records and people started picking up on them. And, and, and the whole kind of beat scene with the bands like the Stones and the Yardbirds, Spencer Davis, you know, even like the Beatles were playing a lot of rhythm and blues in the early days and covering. And so a, a lot of the music that we know, a lot of the, um, you know, like the, the, what, what we see is like the British lineage of music, um, you know, you can date it back really to what was happening during the 60s and the influence being uh, uh, black American music and yeah. rock and roll, rhythm and blues and where it comes from there. So it's, it's, it's this whole linkage of history that comes up to date now. And with regards to the way that I play now and what the music I play, which is, um, you know, I'm known for playing like a lot of re-edits and stuff. And, and what that does is, again, it's drawing from the past, but, but putting it in, in a contemporary sense, it enables uh, older music to um, be brought in, into a context that um, fits, you know, these days. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's not a nostalgia thing because, I mean, it's like now, I think, the, the guys who are playing, uh, I think, at, at the university, and, and I'm hearing, I'm just a sucker for a pretty face, which is a, a 1983 track. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's, it's mad that this connection still retains, you know, with, with the younger generation of people. But in another way, it's not so mad because it, it's, the, it's the quality of the music. It's, it's just good music. And, and you know, the, the production values haven't changed massively, you know, in, in, in the, the period that's passed. You know, it's, um, you know, that, that obviously there's been slight technological changes, but a lot of it was already in place by the early 80s. This is why people were experimenting with the technologies got a big question for you okay what would you say is your favorite disco song of all time oh god that's like uh that's well i mean uh, to to actually to, to name one i mean uh, one of the the great disco tracks to me is a track called um jingo by candido which was a a, a cover version of a santana track and it, it goes back to an earlier track as well uh, and it was a, Cu a cuban musician uh, on the salso label which was a famous disco label and why i say that is it, it it was a track that translated through all sorts of different scenes it was popular commercially but it was also re retained its underground yeah. aspect you know so you know tracks like that are, are very special because um you know that, that they they always retain that. They're always fresh. They, 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 they've, they've not been overplayed, so to speak. So, but I mean, I could name many, many disco records. You know, there's just, yeah. just so many out there. That's true. That's true. What would you say is the strangest song request you've received? Well, I, I worked in Nor. I, when, it, when I was 18 in 1978, I went over to Norway and worked in the clubs out there. And I remember, you know, like um, this, this, this um, guy kept coming over to me and asking, "What did he ask for?" Chuborg, Chuborg, he was like, Chuborg, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, Chuborg, Chuborg, and he's kept oh, saying to me, I'm thinking, and he's thinking it's the bar, you know, <laughs> and I'm like DJing away there, so that was the, the, probably the strangest, Chuborg. <laughs>